Hello everyone, welcome in. Welcome in Abby, Matthew, Zukinam. How is everyone today? Now, hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I feel like my microphone's a bit loud. I'm gonna turn it down. Just a little bit, there we go. Doing fine, excellent. Excellente. I'm doing all right, I'm uh, sort of. <laughs> Um, as I mentioned in Discord just a minute ago, I'm trying to quit smoking, so this is challenging for me because doing streams is quite stressful. Uh, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> I'm on day two, and uh, yeah, it's hard. The cravings are hitting me hard right now. But I think if I just keep myself occupied, I'm going to be okay. I think that's the key. To surviving this. Uh, you can hear me just fine. Excellent. Cool. So today I'm just going to continue with the pinup I was doing last week. Um, hopefully you guys remember that. Some of you may not have caught it. Unfortunately, the music I was using was not YouTube friendly after all. And as soon as I stopped fr uh, streaming, I had like 30 emails of copyright problems. <laughs> So that kind of sucks. Um, so I had to pull that video down because there was just too many emails coming through. I'm like, oh God. But this is what we were working on. Uh, a new pinup I inked traditionally, scanned it in, and we're coloring it in Procreate. So I don't think I've, I haven't touched it really since last week. Uh, so one thing I did do was, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but basically I had the, um, the line art just on multiply. So I put it back to normal. You can see it's just black and white. Um, and what I do want to do is color some of the line work and there's a little trick you can do to, to do that with scanned in line work. That's literally like a black and white layer. And you can change it so that it's just so that you can draw on the lines like I would usually with digital stuff. So it involves um, copying your copying your line art. I'm not going to do it now, but actually, yeah, let's just delete what I have and we'll do it. We'll do it again. So copying that line art, making a new layer. Um, I'll just turn off the lines for a minute so that you can see what I'm doing. I probably should have done this at the very start before I started coloring anything, but it doesn't matter. So we've got a blank layer and we have our artwork copied and I'm now going to fill that layer with black and then I'm going to make a mask, which will do this and we're going to click on the mask, make sure we have the, the layer mask selected and the lighter blue there and we're going to paste the line work and it's going to look super weird because it's inverted and so we're going to then click on the layer mask and click invert and then it's back to normal so I can now delete the original line work there we don't need that anymore but basically if I click back on the the black section of that layer and I go and grab say a bright color like this and I start painting in. You can see that now it's painting on just the lines and yeah, it's it's basically like it's all been digitally inked rather than a scan. So there you go. <laughs> that is something I just did today to um, prep for coloring some of the line work. Uh, thank you very much, Rebellious Wolf. Um, and Ender says, thought I would pop in and say hi, got to go, but good luck with quitting smoking. Thank you very much, Anne. Benjamin says, hey guys, sorry I haven't been around a bit. No worries, man. Um, I'll, I'll try and do these as much as I can and you, you might miss some, you might catch some. It's all good, whenever you can. Riley Draw says, hello everyone, I'm glad I can make it a stream. Welcome in, Riley. All right, so there's, yeah, there's a couple of, I'm not gonna change all the line work because I don't think it really needs, needs it, but there is a few sections which I think 
probably could do with a bit of line work change, such as uh, the the scroll the scroll work here. Um, is the music loud enough, guys? Uh, I want you to be able to hear it rather than kind of silence. But I also need you to hear my voice too, so... <laughs> Mm. Oh, coffee. See, I mean, I can get rid of cigarettes, but I don't know if I can get rid of coffee. <laughs> I think I love coffee too much. I don't think I can get rid of that. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a... A busy social week for me. I on Monday, my friend Christopher Downs, who is a pretty successful cartoonist here in Tasmania, he works for the local, local, the national newspaper here. Uh, he does all the political cartoons, and he's a really cool guy, and he does great work. And um, we go for walks every week, and just talk. All, all sorts of things <laughs> but it's really nice to have um, somebody who's kind of in the similar industry as you that you can talk to about you know the trials and tribulations of being an artist so I really appreciate Chris but anyway on Monday he took me to somewhere he also works part-time which is called Mona which is the Museum of Old and New Art in in Tassie in Hobart and I've been there before but it's been quite a few years and uh, yeah, so he took me around, gave me basically like a personal tour of the whole place, which was really cool. Uh, and you know, it's all modern art, so it's, you know, it's hit or miss. You don't have to like everything. There's a lot that I just, you know, I don't care for, but there is some really cool stuff there too. Um, yes, the volume for both seems fine to you, awesome. Marina stuff to be a bit pretentious. Yeah, look, I think that comes with the territory a little bit, doesn't it? But um, you win some, you lose some. I don't, I don't think Chris is pretentious at all. I think he's um, pretty down to earth. Otherwise, he wouldn't be my friend. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got to experience. Uh, I can't really remember any of the names because. The names of the artists and things, I'm so shocking at that sort of stuff. But there was basically, there was a room that we went in that was so cool. I'm very bad at explaining it, but I'll try. So, first we, we went into this, this white room, uh, and there was this um, big square pink, fluorescent pink square thing on the wall. Uh, and the tour guide was in front of it, and we were all sitting down, and she was explaining to us that we're going to go into a room, and it'll be like strobing lights and all sorts of things and it goes for about like eight minutes or something um, anyway she gave us the whole rundown we had to put like special socks on and like okay we're going to go into the room and she turns around and she walks into the pink square that's on the wall <laughs> I had no idea it blew my mind because I just thought it was like a light square or something but that was the room and you walk through and it's this giant room that's just full of light and you can't see any of the seams of the walls or the ceilings or anything so it's it's really like a kind of like optical illusion and you're just kind of like floating in a void of of crazy lights and stuff so yeah it was <laughs> it was interesting <laughs> that kind of stuff really like kind of freaks me out a little bit um, so I'm quite proud of myself for doing that. And then there was another one that's in the restaurant called Farah, which is like a giant ball that you can go into and they've got a bed that you can lie down and you stare up at the dome. And it's much like the other thing where they like project lights and it, it gets really intense, really intense guys. And that went for 15 minutes. And I had to, yeah, I survived. There was a panic button if you got a bit, you know, nauseous or feel like you're going to have a seizure or something, so. <laughs> Look, it, it 
it almost broke my brain. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Uh, Riley says, my recommended, bleh, can't even talk. My recommendation is to tell yourself you are not a smoker. I know smoke, smokers who do that. I know the cravings hit hard, you'll get through it. Good luck, thanks man, I appreciate it. I will be honest with you guys, I did fail <laughs> just before this stream. <laughs> I've done so well though, like I've actually, I was really proud of myself because I know how hard quitting is and up until this stream, I was doing really well. So I'm not, I'm not giving up, giving up. But I will admit that I just had a sneaky one before stream and, you know, you get the waves of disappointment coming through you when you do it. So I'm just going to try and be mindful. Like if I, if I have one, if I fail again, I'm just going to be mindful of it and not get into like enjoying it too much. Does that make sense? Um, be aware of what I'm doing rather than just not mindful. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hopefully someone understands what I'm trying to say here. Uh, but yeah, no, I have actually kind of been thinking like, okay, I'm a non-smoker now. That's kind of what I've been thinking the last, all, all of yesterday. And yeah, I kind of can't believe I went all of yesterday without smoking at all. Um, but this, this happened because I was at my friend's house. We had a little gathering and there was, there was a few drinks involved. Let's be honest. I need to be a bit brighter. There was a few drinks involved and I've come to the conclusion that Shiraz does not, does not work for me. <laughs> um, I was pretty sick the next morning and I, I was not like intoxicated. So that's why it's really weird. And I feel like it's just Shiraz because Shiraz has um, messed me up a little bit before. I don't know what it is about it. Cause I drink a lot of, I don't drink a lot, but I drink red wine, you know, just as a, with dinner and whatnot. Um, but yeah, something about Shiraz just really puts me on my butt. Oh, you and Peter are both cutting down. That's good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, yeah, so I woke up the next morning, I was just not good at all. I felt really terrible. I had a headache, like a migraine for four hours, four or five hours in the morning. I just didn't, I felt so sick. I didn't want to have a cigarette because I felt like it would make me feel worse. And then I just thought, this is a good opportunity to try and quit. So I didn't have one all of yesterday. And for me, that's a breakthrough. I have not put that much effort in since I started smoking again, which was a year and a half ago now. So anyway, I'm rambling about smoking. I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> if that's what you want to hear on this stream or not. Okay. Ooh, there's some lines here. I got to do these. Okay, any other lines that I want to do? Probably, probably maybe these ones. Oh, and this. Find the right color to do it with. Actually, I was going to change that color. Oh, I don't know. We'll just keep doing it. Uh, Riley says, I love your art and style. Keep up the incredible work. Where do you most, where do most of your illustration jobs come from? Art station, Instagram, or personal website? Um, to be honest, Riley, I have not really been taking any work for years. So I've really, the only, oh, that's not true. It's kind of, it's mostly true. 
Uh, I've mostly been working for Plat Hat Games since 2017, and they've been keeping me pretty busy with board game art. Um, I believe that job came... They found me on Instagram, I think. And then they emailed me. So that's how that job came about. Um, I think, honestly, I think Instagram's the biggest one now. Um, because the jobs I've done for 3D Total, so the, uh, Beginner's Guide to Fantasy Drawing, and there's a new book that I've just done, and what was the other one? Um, there was a book about character design, about heroines. Um, we all drew, like, really tough ladies. Um, anyway, all of that sort of stuff, I think... I think that came from Instagram too. Not actually on Instagram, but I believe they found me on Instagram. So, um, and then probably went to my website and emailed me through there. So yeah, these days Instagram I think is the biggest thing. Uh, I do have ArtStation, um, but I haven't. I don't think I've gotten any work through there myself. But I hear it's a you know it's a good place to to get work from. I'm sure that happens for a lot of people's. What is going on here? Here we go. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> uh, Benjamin says I find the boredom is the problem you get bored and you suddenly want to smoke yes absolutely you've got the there's the chemical addiction or the nicotine addiction but then you, there's also the psychological aspects of smoking as well and boredom is a big part of it so keeping yourself like busy I think is really key um yeah, that's what I'm going to try and do. Thankfully, I've got plenty of things to do, so... Soften those lines up a little bit. That looks good. Uh, Dr. James Hierro, welcome in. What kind of paper do you use for your drawings? Um, not anything specific because I've got a whole bunch of different papers here, but generally I like fairly thick, uh, probably 200 GSM and up, and fairly smooth. The smoother the better, really. Uh, that's that's what I'm into. <laughs> Although working with watercolors, you know, a little bit of a toothy paper is is okay. Uh, Andrew says, if you have one cigarette, you haven't failed. You you have only had one in a day, week, month, whatever length of time you achieved. Praise yourself for that, and move forward. Thanks, man. I appreciate, appreciate that. <laughs> it's not a complete failure anyway, is it? It's like, I've still stopped smoking for that length of time before that cigarette, so that's got to count for something, I think. I think I need to add these little bits of paper in here. It's something I didn't do before. Why is that happening? <laughs> That's weird. That's really weird. Hmm. 
color pi picker is kind of strange sometimes when you have lots of layers going on and multiple blend modes and stuff. Uh, Benjamin says, I've just started making a to-do game in Unity. While I've done okay in Krita Gimp with a mouse, is Procreate and a stylus an expensive investment? Uh, yeah, I think... Well, Procreate's not an expensive investment at all. It's like maybe $15 uh, and that's it. There's not like a subscription or anything. So that's like super cheap for the value of the app. Um, but the iPad is like, you know, I don't know, like $1,200 or something. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty expensive, but I think it's pretty good. <laughs> um, you're the second person actually to mention the 2D game engine Unity. Uh, somebody linked me something and I haven't checked it out yet, but uh, yeah, I'm interested because you're the second person who's mentioned that now. I'm very curious. But that's cool you're making a, a game. That's really cool. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this pinup anymore. <laughs> But that's what happens, isn't it, guys? You, you know, you start doubting yourself as time goes on. There's a bit of something there. Can you see that? That's whatever that is. It needs to go. It's the hair. Oops. Sloppy, sloppy hair work, guys. That's terrible. <laughs> Let's just fix that up a little bit. No worries, Riley. Glad I could help. Um... Benjamin says he chose Unity over Unreal Engine because it's on Linux. Oh. Huh. I don't really know much about Linux. I've never really used it before. I think this is because I roughed in that hair really quickly, didn't I? And just as a test to see if I wanted it or not, and I didn't really do it properly. This is why it's looking a little bit rough. <laughs> it's looking really rough. Wow. Couldn't really tell before with all the layers on, but uh, maybe as I'll try and fix it up. Oh my god, <laughs> what is this? Who coloured this? This is terrible. I've only got myself to blame. Um, anyway, I should be seeing Mr. B this weekend, and he's going to bring along the Green Man bookmark engraving that we worked on a few weeks ago. So I'm super excited to see how that turned out. And I will let you guys know. The stickers, I haven't done anything more with the stickers yet, but I really need to do that. I'll probably do that this weekend, actually. Um, sort of get those figured out. I don't think I'm gonna reprint them because we had that issue where I wasn't like super happy with them, but they look really cool. The actual print of the stickers look really, really cool. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about these, uh, these fairy stickers. So I'm going to get them ready, figure out how I'm going to package them, make them look really cool, put them on the store, and get them out to you guys if you want them. So hopefully I can get that done this weekend. That doesn't look right at all. Let's fix that right now. What is this? Um, 
Do, 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 do. Just read in the comments. Uh, yeah. Rebellious Wolf, yes, it's all your fault. How dare you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eduardo. I'm hoping this comes together. Because right now I'm just I'm not I'm not I'm not feeling it right now. I feel like I just may have out overdone the light. But then I also feel like it's underdone, so I've got a few things to figure out here. And I need to find that colour again. Is it that colour? No, it's that colour. God, this microphone picks up everything. You can hear like construction going on outside. <laughs> uh, Andrew Law says, Procreate rocks except for the layer restrictions on my old iPad I have. <laughs> Which, uh, what iPad do you have, Andrew? Sounds like it's time for an upgrade. Will says, did you decide what to do with the design from the other day? T-shirts or stickers? Ah, uh, no, I didn't make a final decision there. Let's move that out of the way. What's this doing here? Mm. Um, no, no, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> Get these thoughts in my brain. I chuck them out to you guys and then I forget about them. Um, but I will probably do something with it. Uh, I think it would, I don't know. I think it would look good on a t-shirt. I just don't know if people would wear it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a bit fussy when it comes to t-shirts. I mean, I'm just wearing a black plain t-shirt right now, but I'm a bit fussy. I'm a bit fussy with t-shirts. So I don't know if other people are like me with that, but um, but yeah, I mean, it could work as a sticker. Do I have it here to show you? I probably do. Let's see if I can find it so you know what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness, can I find it? Uh, I don't know. Got folders all over the place here, guys. Um, give me one sec to, <laughs> to find this. I wouldn't mind showing you a bit of what I've got cooking anyway. Alright, Wanderings 2. Wanderings to it's it's loading. There there are big files. There's a lot of files. There you go. These it's it's not even gonna probably load all the thumbnails because it's just terrible. My iMac is stretched to the max. Um and I don't even know where it is now. No, <laughs> it's not even going to load them, so that's going to be really hard to show you. How silly. No, 
I'm sorry guys, I can't show you because it's just gonna, bleh, it's not gonna load. Um, yeah, anyway, hope that answers your question. Uh, in terms of like, yeah, so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be making a new art book, Wonderings 2. I think I'm gonna call it Wonderings 2, because it's basically the same kind of book. Um, let me just grab this. So, Wonderings uh, is a sketchbook with a whole bunch of traditional art. Uh, there's a couple of digital artworks in here too, but mostly traditional art. Um, so I'm thinking of making a new, new one of those, putting them together. It's coming along pretty nicely now. I'm pretty, pretty happy. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got like enough content. Um, I would like to put in the work I've done for Summoner Wars, and I have already started designing those pages, just because it's really nice to see them all together. And I'm gonna gonna need to get some permission from Plat Hat Games. Hopefully they're okay because I think it will really look really good in the book, and it's. I mean, it's nice to have a book to look back on and see all the work that I've done and to show people. So it's sort of like a portfolio book in a way. So hopefully I can get permission to put the Summoner Wars artwork, my client work, in this book as well, rather than just sketches. <laughs> um, although, you know, I'm sure you guys probably want to see that too. But um, I think it would just, it if I can put those in it will add a lot of color to the book which I think would be really cool to break it up from just sketch 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 you know what I mean um, we have talked about like an art book that's just summoner wars uh, and we could do that still because I'm not going to put the focus of this sketchbook wanderings 2 is not going to be summoner wars so it'd only be like a few pages but if we did a full art book for the game I think we could make a full art book like with with all the thumbnail sketches and everything um, of every character. Yeah, so we could do that too, but... Um, but yeah, hopefully I can get it approved to pop it in there. I think it would be a nice little addition. Um, but yeah, I put those, uh, those pages together recently, and yeah, it was really nice to see, like, all the work I've done since... Um, I think it was last last June, July or August that I started the job and I've done a lot of characters, <laughs> a lot. So yeah, it's it's nice to see. Sometimes you forget that you've been so busy and that you have done things. It's easy to forget the achievements and stuff that you have done. So putting it together and, and looking back on what you've achieved is nice. It's a, it's a reminder that you haven't just been wasting your time, you have been doing things. Hopefully we can get this finished soonish, um, and just keep keep working on new pinups, and eventually I'll have enough for a new pinup book as well. So little steps, you know, towards goals. That's what it's all about. Welcome in, Free Will. Oh, an omnibus volume two. You know, I've thought about that as well. So the difference between Omnibus and Wanderings is Omnibus was more a portfolio book, so finished work rather than sketches. It was a bit of both, but that's kind of how I view Omnibus as like really a collection of everything that I've done. It was at the time, anyway. Any, anything of kind of quality <laughs> of what I had done at the time. Whereas Wanderings is more of a sketchbook. Um, so, I mean, it's probably about time for a new on Omnibus. Uh, I think the first book came out in 2012, so that's almost 10 years. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Blue Green Yemi says, overall, how does the job feel? Is the workload hard? The workload is great. It really 
It's really good. <laughs> um, it is about eight characters every month or so. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it does take me a little bit of time. Um, but it allows me to have a break between new characters, which I really, really like. So the deadlines are not hard at all, which is what I really like and was what I needed for this year. I just needed to not be like too stressed. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been really, really good. Um, and as I've always said, Plaid Hat Games is one of the best clients. They are the best client I've ever had working freelance. So I couldn't be couldn't be happy with the work that we do. Um, sometimes I get a bit over it, you know, because I don't know. <laughs> I you know I crave to do other things, but it's that's my fault. That's my fault for maybe not making use of my personal time more wisely, if that makes sense. So, you know, I've got heaps of time to, to do my own thing. It's just about doing it, you know? <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I've got a few goals to work on, a few books to get out. Hmm, I don't know, I don't know about this. Let's pop this light in here. I'm going to have to do something to bring it all together a bit more because it's just looking a little bit I don't know there's too much depth and stuff going on um, how much do they pay me <laughs> that's a good question uh, I don't really know how I feel about talking about it as such does that make sense I don't know if I'm comfortable with that but at the same time, you know, I feel like it's important to be, you know, it's it's helpful for people to know what to charge and everything. So I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> um, they're paying me well. I'm happy. I'm making enough. It's, it's important to know, to feel that you're not, um, you know, busting your balls for nothing. You, you know, you want to be happy about it. So it's a fine line between, you know, you don't want to overcharge, but you also don't want to undercharge yourself. And especially these days, because everything is going up in price and you have to adjust your prices according to inflation of the world. Like... I shouldn't be expected to still charge the same amount that I did in 2003, okay? Because it's not 2003 and everything else has gone up in price. So you kind of have to think about that as well. Oh my God, a ballpark figure, <laughs> not exact. <laughs> I would say... Um, oh my goodness. I don't know if I should say. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, look, I don't know what other people get paid, so, you know, to, to some people it might not seem enough. To, to other people it might seem way too much. 
Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't do anything for less than two hundred dollars a character. Would not do it. Not gonna happen. <laughs> um, because you know the characters. Uh, the characters take between five and ten hours. I'm pretty quick at them now because I've been doing them for a long time. I've got the process like just down. You know, I've done hundreds of characters for Plat Hat games now, so I know I know what I'm doing. Um, but it's it's not really it's not just about the time that it takes you in how much you charge. You know, they're paying for a skill that you've spent your whole life developing. You know, so you got keep that in mind but how long it takes you also does come into it into account because if you're taking you know 13 hours on something that you're only getting paid $200 for well I don't know is that good I'm not sure <laughs> it's all relative you know like I didn't charge much when I first started I think that's okay because you want clients and you want experience, but you don't want to get taken advantage of. Um, but one of the reasons why I don't do comic book stuff anymore is because it just doesn't pay very well. And it's just like so much effort. And I've just felt like I was just getting nowhere financially and being really stressed about it. Like, I don't think I stress as much these days. I think I've come a long way, actually. But... Um, yeah, like, for a cover these days, I don't know how much they'd pay, like, companies would pay you for a cover work. I think it depends who you are and all of that, but, um, I was getting, I can't really remember, but I want to say probably about three, three or four hundred dollars a cover from a certain company. There was another company that was paying me about $600 cover and that was great because I could justifiably spend one or two weeks just on that thing, which is too long really. Uh, but I would because I was a perfectionist and you know, I mean, that's a decent amount to spend a week on because yeah. What am I saying? <laughs> what is that noise? That's so weird, I can hear the noise, the construction noise in the headphones, but not out of the headphones. That's very weird. Uh, Will Kruger says, a good resource is the Graphics Artist Guild book for pricing and contracts. There you go, guys, have a Google of that. Um, Esther Maltita says, or, wait, there's another, uh, no, or how to start as a freelancer and not undervalue your work. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> Benjamin says, two doors up from you, he's doing his shit, <laughs> okay. Well, tell him to stop doing his shed while I'm streaming. Goodness me. Waypoint, welcome in. Um... Think, I don't, it, it's really hard to price your own work, especially when you're first starting out. It really, really is. I think just know your worth. Um, there's always a bit of compromise. So when Crystal Clans came along, I I probably took a couple of days to do a quote for it because it was a big job. It was a really big job that came in. One of the biggest jobs ever I've ever had, actually. So I really wanted to make sure I was getting paid pretty well for it. Um, kind of maybe break it down into a few different options. So you've got your dream amount, the amount of money you get from the job where you're like, this is amazing. I don't have to worry about anything at all. I'm feeling fantastic about this price. And then step it down to something a bit more realistic that's probably where you're gonna when you're gonna hope to end up, and then you have your bottom line where I don't feel comfortable, I won't be happy doing it for anything under that. So 
it's it's nice to kind of break down those options always shoot for the top right always go there first and if they say it's too much then you come down that's how i would do it anyway Um, but the way I see it now is like, yeah, one of the reasons why I'm not doing um, comic book covers and stuff like that is because I'm getting paid like better just to do to draw one character, not particular, not really better, but almost as well. I'm almost getting paid as much to draw one character for a board game than I would be to draw a whole cover for a comic book, which would take me ages and the effort would be a lot do you know what i mean so it's it's so much better to do this for me um is it as fun well it can be i do i do enjoy doing just drawing single characters um coming up with the outfits and the costumes and the armor and the weapons and all of that i do enjoy that uh there is a part of me that misses doing covers and stuff too though so I'll come back to it at one point, I'm sure. I think I have gotten a lot quicker as well. So maybe I wouldn't be spending so much time on my covers as I used to. And so maybe that would be better. All right. I think I'm going to work on something else within this now. Or just playing around with it somehow because I, I don't know. Where's this? This one. I think I need to just take a little break from that and come back to it in a second. Um, okay, let's see, read some comments here. Blue Green Yummy says, My professor says the same thing, never to undervalue yourself as well. Yes, definitely don't. Uh, I'm excited for the day. I do a great job on some projects. I'm sure you will. Absolutely. Uh, Freewheel Illustration says, I got me an iPad Pro 2021 12 inch with Procreate. Big step away from uh, Photoshop and the Wacom. It is a big step away, but how are you liking it? Are you enjoying it? Or are you trying, like, struggling with the, the new learning curve? Will Kruger says, Time yourself on sketching to full color illustration and realistically price yourself compared to what's out there online for pricing. There are a bunch of good resources. Yes. I don't know these resources, but um, I'd be curious to look at them too. That would be interesting to see how I'm faring <laughs> compared to other people in the industry and stuff. So, mm. But yeah, time yourself as well, because how long you take on something is important. And thankfully with Procreate, you can find that out. Let's have a look. I have no idea how long I've spent on this. Um, statistics. Apparently only four and a half hours, so. But that's just the coloring. Uh, yeah, I don't know how long I <laughs> spent actually drawing it, but. Mr. B says, I'm a little odd as I don't charge heaps for my time as I enjoy what I do. Yeah, look, at, that's what I mean. It's going to be different for everyone and how much you're comfortable with. Um, Mr. B, you have another job though, right? So you're not like relying on it for income yet. Wouldn't be surprised if you went full time doing what you love because you're really, really good at it. Uh, Blue Green Yemi says, love hearing your streams when I draw for my homework. Aw, thank you. Will Kruger, I will message you a few to your Instagram or email. Yes, please do. That would be great. Now these, what industry are the pricing for is it just because it really depends like like the comic book industry is its own thing you know they have their own it's been very hard actually because i've 
simultaneously worked in the comic book industry doing covers while also working for an illustration agency that would get me like commercial work that paid really really well and then you'd do <laughs> like you do less work get more money in that industry and then you go to the comic book industry and you do more work and get less and you would paid way less <laughs> so it was such a mind game doing that so it really varies in the industry you're in as well um, yeah if you want to post it in the chat you're welcome to do that I think <laughs> as long as it's a legit thing which I'm sure it is oops why is this you what is this doing go away <laughs> all right um, yes freelance can play many mind games Okay, I did have that. That is kind of interesting, isn't it? Popping that there. For some reason though, the colors are so different on stream to what I'm seeing on my iPad. Like, on my iPad, they're really quite bright. I don't know if you can see the difference there. Let's have a look. Can you see that? How different that looks? so different. I don't know why that is. So it may look a little um, unsaturated but just trust me it it looks okay in real life. <laughs> um, Mergoparian, does having a degree in art even matter in the pricing you give? Not as far as I know. I mean, every job I've ever had, nobody's ever, ever asked where I went to school. Or if, even if I went to school. So, I hate to say it, but uh, I don't think it really means a lot in terms of actually proving what you've done academically. At least for me. I don't know. Maybe it does somewhere. Yeah, Blue Green Yummy says, more is how you sell yourself as an artist to clients. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's more about showing what you've done. What you can do, or what you have done, that gives the client confidence in your ability to do what they want you to do, basically. Will Kruger says, says each is different from children's books to storybooks, so storyboards to digital illustrations. I would post them but I have somewhere to be, so I'm leaving the stream, sadly. Have a great night. Thanks for popping in, man. I appreciate it, and uh, you're absolutely correct. So we, we would all love to check that out. I've heard of it for a long time. I've never really <laughs> put the effort into looking into it. I probably should have. Um, but yes, send me, send me the thing if you can. That'd be awesome. And we'll put it in the Discord, actually, once I've checked it out. So we can all have a, have a look and have a chat about it there. That would be really good. Hello, welcome in all the new people. Uh, Free Will Illustration says, I always wanted to art full time, but it's too much dedication for me. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. You know, it's not gonna be for everyone. Uh, it's not it's not an easy thing to do. It seems all like easy and romantic and all that, but there's a lot of challenges that come with this. So I wouldn't highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, I say that because it's all I've ever done. And, and I feel like there's a lot of good things about working for somebody else, going outside and going to a job and then coming back and just having your art for yourself. There's something that I really admire about that now because I've never had that really. Um, yeah. I hope that makes sense. That looks a bit nice, doesn't it? Mm.
Honestly, it's been a while since I've drawn flames. Uh, how does a flame look again? <laughs> is it like brighter at the top or is it brighter at the bottom of the flame? I should know this. <laughs> Let me Google flame and have a look. I think my brain's not working today, right? I, I have not had enough nicotine. Flame. Show me a flame. It's hard to see in like reality what it, what it does like in an actual photograph of a flame, but like all the cartoon pictures of flames, the bright is at the bottom as such. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, bottom. I think it's okay to do some flowing up as well. Yes, Joseph R, there is a Discord, and I will get the link for you. you just bear with me one sec while I load it up. Uh, Emma Falconer says, it's hard when you get mixed feedback. I've had people say you're charging too much. Oops, get out of my way at Discord. Can't read things. Um, I've had people say you're charging too much and others saying I'm not charging anywhere near enough. It's finding the people who see the value in what you do. Yes, like I said, it's just, it's really hard. It is really, really, really hard to, to figure it out. Um, in the end, it's about what you're comfortable with when it comes down to it. It's your choice, it's your life and you do what you want. If you can get more, I would get more. Uh, and it's probably a good idea to to just check around and ask people just to make sure that you aren't undercutting yourself or getting taken advantage of because you don't want that um, but yeah it's a fine line because there will be clients out there that don't want to pay what what you want and then you have to make the decision do I want to come down do I want to come down and compromise because I really want to do this job and that's exactly what happened with crystal clans is I put across a quote which was pretty high probably um, and they said no uh, I can't do that and I thought oh crap well what am I gonna do now because I actually kind of really wanted to do it and I thought all right let's let's just compromise so I pulled the price down quite a lot Actually, I can't remember how it went about. Maybe I asked them what, what they were comfortable with or what their budget was. Um, it's always great if you can put the ball in their court first up and just say, hey, what's your budget? And hopefully they just say, because it takes the guessing, the guessing work from you because they want you to come up with something that's really low and they'll just say yes. You know, they want to save money. So... It's, it's better if... It's such an awkward thing. I hate doing it. I really do. <clears throat> yeah, it's... It's such a tricky, tricky topic. It really is. What is going on here? Oh my goodness. Um, oh yes, a Discord link. Discord link. One moment. Here is the Discord. And invite people. I want to invite all you new people. So here is the link to the Discord. You're all more than welcome. Um, so hopefully we'll get a link to like pricing and stuff that was mentioned earlier and I'll pop it into when I get it I'll pop it into the probably the art tips and tricks channel I think it'd probably be best for that um, we can talk about it there um, I don't really know many other board game artists so I'm not really sure what the going rate is for even my industry. 
but I'm like I said, I'm pretty happy with with how I'm being paid. Like I don't think it's it's bad. It's it's quite good. I'm doing all right. Now, if I could quit smoking, I would save a lot of money. Because <laughs> the price of cigarettes in Australia is ridiculous. Like, it's so bad. I feel like we're now living in, um... What's the movie? The Fifth Element. You guys seen The Fifth Element when... Uh, what's his name? Buy cigarettes. Well, something like that. Didn't he buy cigarettes? I hope I'm not just like imagining this. And they were like really expensive. Or it was like one cigarette and it was really long. Oh god, I gotta watch that movie again. Well, that's making it look a little bit more interesting. I really wish I could figure out why the colors don't look very good on the screen. Don't know. Hmm, very weird. Your favorite movie. <laughs> it's a pretty good movie. Oh, that's right, Benjamin. Had a long filter and a tiny smoking part. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Kind of like that. I feel like, you know when you change something from RGB to CMYK and the colors get really dull? I feel like that's exactly what's happened to my stream. And I have no idea why. <laughs> Mr. B says he did woodshop in year seven. That's cool. I did that too. I was just really bad at it. <laughs> um, Mergaporian says, how do you deal with clients not liking the finished piece and you have to redo the work and get paid the same, especially if the price of material is involved? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, has that ever happened to me before? Uh, not that I can really remember. There was a commission I did for someone that they didn't like. And I could, I could understand a little bit, so I think I did give him a bit of a discount. So I think I sent some money back to him. Um, because I felt like, yeah, he kind of had a bit of a, a bit of a case against me, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, the thing about that is like, 
I think I did say, well, well I don't want to, I don't want to get involved, to be honest. It doesn't matter. The point is, like, he wasn't happy with the end product, which is okay. It happens. Um, but in terms of, like, a big client, uh, I don't know. Like, I think if they've approved, you, you should be getting approval on your sketches, right? On your the idea, the initial thumbnail, there should be some communication throughout the process so that when you get to the final product, it's not different to what they expected. Now, if they have seen the sketch and the sketch has continued in line with the art direction and everything like that, and they've been involved in the process throughout, throughout the process. And so, yeah, I mean, if, if your sketch or your final sketch hasn't jumped and changed direction to your final and it's hasn't come out into something unexpected uh that's kind of shitty for them to just change their mind and say oh that's not what we want to well that's not what we want now well too bad buddy because that's what you asked for so they should pay you for that and they should commission you again to do something different um within reason you know if they want some little changes i don't mind doing little changes even to final artwork, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but if they want something changed a little bit, I can do that. If they want changes throughout the sketching and development phase, that's totally normal. And that's what you want, so that you can um, get the client what they're happy with, because they might not know exactly exactly what they want at the start. And it's, it's our job to kind of figure it out, throw them some ideas, throw them some sketches, and figure it out together but yeah if a client um, if you've had that process and then at the end they're just like oh actually we've changed our mind we want something different well pay up and then we'll do something else <laughs> so hope that helps uh, Benjamin O'Neill says I think if you get a bad five from a client it's best in the long run to say no yeah, you got to trust your instincts as well. Definitely. Mm. Blue Green Yemi says also with clients like those it is best to have contracts prepared. Yeah, absolutely. If you can if you can get a contract or an agreement or something something in writing that maybe says how many changes you'll do um, throughout things and that way that you know they they can't kind of mess you around too much. If they knew what they were getting into, so. Good lord, look at that. <laughs> Whoops. I kind of like that though. We're going to do something like that. Uh, what are we going to do here? Let's do some more airbrushing. Ooh, that is...
Okay, this this is this is looking better. What I needed to do was change the colours of the lines a bit more, which is tricky because I've already done some colour on there and when I do this it'll go over the top, but maybe that's not gonna make too much of a difference. But all of these black lines were just they're just standing out too much from the glow of the fire that I wanted, so I'm just gonna airbrush airbrush into them on a really low opacity. just kind of push them back a little bit. And so I think I am much happier with that. Let's see if I got any more comments here. Mercaporian says, Procreate introduced the new 3D painting option, which is pretty cool. Need to find a good 3D modeling app to work with it. Yes, yes, it is very, very cool. Uh, I would like to try it, try it out again too. Um, I did start messing around with Blender and what was the other one? ZBrush. I probably should mess around with it again <laughs> at some point because um, I'd love to make my own characters and stuff um, and then paint them that'd be sweet uh, forge putty 3d nomad sculpt are the best Ooh, forge putty 3d nomad sculpt hmm I'll have to look those up um, Yes, actually, maybe I should, maybe I can set, talk about this. One of the one things, one of the one things I was thinking of for my new Wonderings Kickstarter rewards and things like that is maybe I'll make a statue, uh, a figurine, a figure, because I have these concepts I've done previously that never got fleshed out. And it was a really cool character that I had in mind. So I'm thinking of like, as part of the book, like show the developmental sketches from thumbnail to sketch to finished rendered drawing, and then probably pay somebody else to 3D sculpt it. Hey Zeno, welcome in. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Um, Yes, so yeah, get it get it 3D modeled somehow and maybe do some 3D prints as part of like the highest tier level of rewards. So you get a book and all the other stickers and maybe prints and stuff, but you also get a really cool figure where all the developmental sketches and everything are in the book. I think that could be pretty cool. What do you think? Uh, basically, it's if... I don't think I can show you because my computer's really slow at the moment, but it is a, a fawn-like lady character she's very sexy she's got big horns and she has these cute little like fairy critters with big tails around her and i think one of them she was playing a flute there's a few different versions of her which i've got to figure out which one to go with get sideshow to do it oh my god that would be amazing <laughs> um or even pay someone to rig your sculpture character now rigging is that like where you can make it animate like you've got to put in like the skeleton so you can start moving stuff eric ayala says do you think you could recreate riot games arcane style with procreate 3d feature mm. uh i have no idea <laughs> but i will say i've watched the first two or three episodes of arcane and damn damn that's a Good looking show and it makes me want to do fan art but uh, yeah jinx I really want to want to want to draw her but I haven't I'm assuming that maybe there'll be a time jump in the series because she's older in League of Legends right I don't know I don't really know anything about League of Legends but in the show she's a little girl which she's adorable but I want to draw her as or an, an adult obviously so I'm looking forward to seeing if that happens. 
Um, okay, seems like people are pretty interested in the statue idea. That's that's really cool. I would really like to make that happen. Um, Jared Smith says, uh, I would love to have you do the character art for my book sometime. Thought I would drop in and say you're great. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, I'm not really taking much work at the moment. Like I've said before, I'm pretty much just doing um, uh, board game stuff for one company. It's keeping me busy and it's gives me enough time to do my own thing. So at the moment, I'm not, I'm not taking on too much. It jumps in episode four. Okay, sweet. I think I've seen three. I don't know. I was I was watching it yesterday when I was hungover and I kind of dozed off a few times. <laughs> I was very tired, guys. We stayed up till like three in the morning talking and, and having a blast. So it was good. It was good fun. But um, I'm too old for hangovers. It's not. It's not good. I'm verging on 40 years old now. I just can't do it. Uh, I can see some weird, sh weird stuff going on here. Can you see it? Because I can. It is to do with... These flames. Which is a pain in the butt. But I'm going to... I'm going to get rid of it. That is also a bit weird, isn't it? What is doing that? So many layers. And I have no idea what's doing what. Where is that coming from? Oh, it's on the... I think it's on the liner. God. Now I, I can't color pick the color that it actually is. That's so annoying. Let's use the smudge tool. There we go. Alright, fixed. Forget about it. <laughs> Put everything back on. Is that everything? if we had that one on or not. <laughs> it might be a bit intense, I think, so I'm just going to erase it a little bit. Alright, let's get back into doing some of these highlights again. Uh, McDoyle, welcome in. Island checking in. It's always so late here for your streams. Yes, statue for sure. Sweet. What time is it in Ireland? Uh, it's probably like some ridiculous time, isn't it? Um, K Luffy, thanks for popping in. I appreciate it. Andrew says, but yes, damn, would love to figure out how they do the animation and that cool concept art style CG. Yeah, it's really cool, isn't it? It's a beautiful style. Uh, it looks just like a game. I could, you know, easily see that. Um, I don't know what I'm saying, but <laughs> it, God damn, it looks good. Uh, Toby Simmons says, any advice on making the inked lines look as good as the sketched ones, ensuring the integrity original drawing 
this is a hard thing to do and um, hmm. it's hard man even I haven't figured out like exactly how to do that because you always lose something you always lose some kind of movement and you know when you see all the underlines of the sketch it just adds depth and movement to the whole thing so when you get rid of all that and you just stick to the one solid black line it's kind of inevitable i would just try maybe loosening up your ink maybe as an experiment just do something real ink something really messy in a crazy kind of almost like you're sketching with pen and see how you feel about that and then take that and color it just as an experiment, like just try something completely different. Um, and maybe you'll feel like you're bringing that energy into your final if your ink ink lines are kind of a little bit messy, like break the rules. Um, I haven't really done that here. This is all pretty, pretty tight. Uh, but like adding little, little lines and some little details and not contrasting the scan so that like everything's completely solid. I've tried to leave some imperfections and stuff in my lines. I don't know. I kind of think that helps a little bit. <laughs> 1.30 in the morning in Ireland. That's pretty late. That's pretty late. I appreciate you uh, popping in in the early hours of the morning. Uh, Toby Simmons says, any advice on making the ink? Oh, I've already read that. <laughs> Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, try it out. See how you, see how you go. Um, I did mention this last time, but I'll, I'll mention it again for your benefit. But if you benefit from it, I don't know. Oh, let's get this one. Let's get this one. So, this is my rough. Let's go to the thing. Camera focus. This is my rough, and I inked really, 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 really rough. Like, I inked like... There is some pencil under there, but then I just went straight to ink and just fucked around with it. And I had a great time. I had a really great time. And it makes me want to think like, maybe I just, I should have just colored that and, and see what you can do with it. Cause it's got so much energy. So I don't know, just as an experiment, like it could be, it could be fun to do that. All right, I think, I don't know. This piece is a bit tricky really, isn't it guys? Because maybe, maybe we'll do some different rendering. Maybe we'll use the airbrush and the marquee tool. Let's go like old school comic book style colouring. Actually, let's just delete that to start with. And by old school, I mean like you make a marquee selection you get the airbrush really hard to figure out the sizes of this and look how big that is already. That's on 4% and it's huge. So confused. Anyway, we um... Why is that on top of everything? Hold on, hold on. Let's just make this its own layer. Because this is a bit weird. Let's go to add. Let's try this again. So you do one pass like that. It's been a while since I've done this method and then you make a new selection that's a little bit smaller. I don't know how this is going to look. It might look terrible. And you add a little bit more. And then we... 
add some here. Here. I don't know if I'm really doing this very well, but... Let's try and do a bit more in here, maybe. Kind of gives a nice hard edge to things in certain places where you want it. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. It's, it's a method that I haven't done for a long time. Turn that on and off. Uh, Blue Green Yummy says, Today is another informative stream. It has been quite a, uh, a good one, I think. We've talked about a few topics, which has been fun. Forest Song, welcome in. Thank you. Hello, Gustavo. I'm doing all right. Thank you very much. Not too bad at all. We're making some some progress here. Definitely making a little bit of progress. Um, I'm going to keep going with this because I'm kind of enjoying this this process of adding these um, marquee selections. I'm kind of having fun with this. I'm just going to keep going. I like that a lot more than what I was doing, to be honest, so... I don't know, how, how do you guys feel about this method? Oops. It's fun to try and push things a bit further. Oops. So, so much more shiny now. I'm probably going to go in and add more details to that later on, but for now, we're just going to keep going.
So what's everyone up to for the weekend? Um, I am quite excited because the Wheel of Time is coming out. I have mentioned it on stream a couple of times now. <laughs> so you guys should know I'm excited. Um, it comes out today or tomorrow. I think tomorrow on Amazon Prime. So the Wheel of Time based on Robert Jordan's epic fantasy book series that I have been reading the last couple of years and they're making a TV show so I'm super hyped I'm a bit I'm a bit concerned <laughs> that I won't like it that or that there'll be things that I won't like but you can't have everything right so I'm just I'm excited to experience it let's put it that way Anyway, I think this is helping a little bit to pull it together, but it's gonna it's gonna be a slow process, and hopefully I'm not gonna overdo it. I hope not, anyway. This is actually gonna be a good idea if I can compartmentalize a little bit of this pull it together a little bit some on her eyeballs here. Oops.
Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> this, is, this is a complicated piece. Uh, lighting is a little bit tricky sometimes. I am curious, like, if I could play around with a few things here. I'm just curious where I could take this. Um, so what I'm going to do... The progress, uh, well, let's have a look. Let's see what we did today. Time lapse. I mean, we've we've made some slow progress. Where did we start? We started probably probably around here. So not too much, but just adding some more lighting in here slowly. We've been talking about a few things as we go as well. Uh, we started adding adding more flames, flame highlights, more glows, um, line color changes. Uh, and that's about it. So it doesn't seem like we've done a lot, but we have been doing this for How long have we been streaming? An hour and a half or something Yeah, something like that um, So it's coming along, but I do want to just experiment with What is it? Is it copy canvas? It's, oh my god, what are you doing? paste okay cool so now we have one layer that is a copy of the whole thing um, and I can muck around with it I'm going to duplicate it just one more time and go to gradient map holy moly are you seeing that oh that looks so cool <laughs> that looks so cool breeze oh Damn, I love that. Damn! That just makes me want to change it to just green. <laughs> what else we got? Some pretty cool effects you can do here. Um, gradient. Breeze, instant, Venice, whoa. Some of them are gonna look a bit weird depending on uh, what your levels are like as well. How do I delete that? I did not mean to make that one. Delete. So you kinda gotta play around a little bit. There we go. I mean, that that's fucking sexy. I kind of like that. <laughs> Blaze. Why is that there? Okay. I'm just going to do apply that one and then turn it on and off again see what the difference is between my original Whoa! That looks so dull compared to that <laughs> Crazy If we can turn the opacity down a bit I'll probably go for something mid-range and I think that looks hot. That looks hot. But I'm also going to duplicate it again. And chuck it up top. You know what? I've done this wrong. Because I didn't take my border off. So I'm going to have to do this again. <laughs> to the actual image. But I'm curious. So with this one. With this one. What do I want to do? I want to do something weird. Maybe that one. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm just experimenting here, guys. So, bear with me. 
Alright, we're going to mask it. We're going to airbrush it. And we're going to airbrush the color in. It's basically just done a purple thing around it. I don't know if I actually like that or not. Probably not so strong. We popped it down a bit like that. Um, and then on top we could probably do... Ooh, what could we do? We could do a bloom. Let's see what that looks like. Oh gosh. I've not really used this feature much. The layer is empty. God's sake. Fine. Let's um, group those. Duplicate it. I'm going to have to do all of this again because I, I'm just experimenting. But this is what I'm going to... Potentially what I'm going to do once I've just finished rendering a little bit. Uh, I probably need to just go in here and make sure I do the thorns before I go on to the final version of this. But uh, let's flatten that. Okay. Now duplicate it. What was I going to do? I was going to bloom. That's right. To see how bloom works. Ooh, guys. What a cool feature this is. Um, I don't like it on everything, so I think we can use the pencil instead, right? Oops. <laughs> we can get rid of some stuff. Maybe. I'm not really sure how it works. They've changed it since I last used it. Oh, that's so weird. Reset. Cancel. Let's try again. <laughs> Bloom, pencil, why is it not working? Oh, it's on the razor. There we go. Okay, this is cool. This is, um, this is what we want. We wanted to punch out a few different areas. I am going to go in here and add um, the same highlights, flame highlights, to the big flame here. So we'll, I'll do that at some point. But definitely add way more like glow to this section. Maybe a bit more to the edges and stuff of the thing. Yeah, super cool feature. Hey guys, let's preview that on and off. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yes, it, it'll it'll keep getting better. I hope. Um, I think we'll call it there today. I'm probably going to do a bit more work off stream on this and just bring it to fruition. Um, and next next week I don't know what we're going to work on <laughs> I have no idea it could be a new pinup I have some more thumbnail sketches in development so it would be cool to just keep these keep banging these out I think that would be pretty sweet because I would really like to make some progress on my new art book that could come and it might take a while it'll probably be next year sometime that by the time I actually finish enough material to make that book but um, it's something to work on stream with you guys so I'm pretty happy to do that anyway thank you so much for joining me on today's stream I know it's a little bit shorter today but I am quitting smoking and this is hard <laughs> 
So I might just go get some food. Food is always a good a good way to distract those cravings. And I have to watch that though, because I don't want to get overweight. I don't want to like, yeah, <laughs> replace cigarettes with food too much. But yeah, thank you so much, guys. Love you. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Thank you for talking with me about some really cool topics. And join the Discord. I'm going to chuck it in here. We're going to get some links for figuring out and researching prices of how you price your work in different industries. So we'll see if we can do that. Thanks again, guys. Love you. And uh, have a safe and awesome weekend. And don't forget to watch The Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. And tell me what you think. You love it, you hate it, let me know. Alright. <laughs> Catch you guys. We'll see you next time.